Well, here we are. This is so, this is so exciting. Um, I have been a member of Donna's um, probiotic group for a little while now. I'd been following her for much longer than my membership would indicate. And it's really with Donna's help that I started turning around my digestive health um, shortly after discovering I had osteoporosis. And I can't say that I have you know, completed the task, maybe it's never done. <laughs> but I, um, I want to introduce you all to Donna because she, rather than asking me um, what it is that I do, I, Donna has a lot of free resources. I'm not saying you need to join anything that costs you money, but she has the knowledge. She has the research and the knowledge. And so I'm going to let Donna introduce herself because you're all probably fairly curious as to why she got involved and how she's a lot like the rest of us. Maybe it's not osteoporosis, but we all have our reasons. Um, so Donna, I'm going to let you take it away. You know, it was about 20 years ago. We'll see. 2001. It was, I was pregnant with my third child and I was 40 years old, much to my surprise. It was really my husband's fault for that, so I blame him on that one. But anyway, uh, it was uh, I was forty. I was forty, and I started having all these problems. I was pregnant, and um, eight weeks before she was supposed to be born, they they delivered her early to save my life because my liver was shutting down. And I was having all kinds of problems, and I was like, I'm forty years old. I have this baby to take care of, and I felt terrible. I had all different kinds of health issues, and I was like, What am I? By the time I'm 60, which I'm actually 61 now, um, she's going to be 20 and I want to live a healthy life because I want to raise her. And I knew I had to do something. So I was looking for answers. People were saying, oh, you're just getting older. And I didn't believe that. So I was in a health food store one day and I found um, two books on a shelf and I pulled them off the shelf. I don't even know why I picked the books that I picked. And I sat down in a chair to read them because I was too tired to stand up. And I oh, the book kind of fell open in my lap and it opened to this page on kefir. And I was like, hmm, what is that? I didn't know what it was. I had never heard of it. I just thought it was interesting. I read a little bit about it. And then I picked up the other book and it too, I opened it with my hand and it opened to a page on kefir. And I kind of was startled when I saw it. Right at that moment, a store employee at the health food store saw me reading that book and came over and stood in front of me and said, you know what, that's one of the most important books you'll ever read. You should really pay attention. And then he walked away and I was like, okay, I was, so I went and I bought both of those books and I went and asked him where Kiefer was and I bought some and my, my little preemie was like three pounds and I was trying everything to get her to gain weight. And um, I started giving her a little tiny teaspoon. She was about 10 months old in a bottle and uh, trying to get her to be healthy. And I remember one day, my husband it was three weeks later, my husband walked into the living room holding her and said, Donna, Holly's, Holly's gained like five pounds, which is a lot for a preemie in a month, three weeks. And the color was in her cheeks. I looked at her, there was this color in her cheeks and all this stuff that she hadn't had before. She was sleeping through the night and I was taking it too. And I remember it was a few days later, I was standing in the kitchen and I was doing dishes and I was looking outside and all of a sudden I found myself in the front yard filling up all my bird feeders. Now, that may not seem like a big deal to you, but a few weeks ago, those birds could get their own food. I didn't give a rip about them because I felt so bad all the time. I was just surviving, trying to get through. And I remember looking around the yard and I heard those birds singing and the grass was so green. And it was this sense, this thing flooded over me, a sense of well-being that guys I never ever had had in my life. It was wellness and I didn't even recognize it because I'd never felt that way before. And I, my, I had diabetes and high blood pressure and both of them had normalized. I didn't know what had happened to me. I didn't know what had happened to Holly because there wasn't a lot about it, information about it, but that was my journey. And I was like, when something makes you well, you pay attention. And it just started me on this journey and I would feed her late at night at two in the morning. I'd be looking for research and reading books and trying to find out what made this drink that had 50 plus probiotics in it so special. And that turned into all of this <laughs> and uh, what a journey it has been. And, um, you know, when you're sick and you're not feeling good, 
you have a lot of hidden treasures in your life. I never wanted to write a book. I, I skipped English in high school and made my sister do my homework. I never wanted to be an author. I never wanted to have a website. But when I started to feel good, these things started to emerge for me that, and I wanted to do them because it felt so good. And I thought, well, what if I could help other people, you know? And my friends were getting well, their kids were getting well. And uh, when you feel good, you want to do good because you have that, you know, that is the, that's the way that you can help one another is when you get to that place of wellness, it just spreads because you can't help it. And one of the big things, since this is, you know, talking about joints and osteoporosis and everything like that was that I had a lot of joint pain and that all went away. And when I would stop drinking kefir, it would come back. And so I correlated it. I didn't know why it did it. It took years for me to figure that out. Now I understand more about that. Um, but these foods, they started to do things that I didn't know they could do. And uh, it has started me on understanding the microbiome and how much, I mean, we're more bacteria in our gut than we are cells of our body. We have a hundred trillion of them and they're here to serve us, to keep us well and to help us. But most people don't know about them. They only know about bad bacteria. And uh, that's kind of my journey. Never in a million years did I think I would love bacteria, but I do because it made me well and I've never forgotten it. Right. And I only recently started making kefir. I don't know how my journey ended up going backward or starting it with kombucha, which, you know, only through my education with you did I find out that there are many, many more live cultures in kefir than right. in kombucha. And so we're talking about kefir largely because I believe Donna, Donna will affirm this for us or not. That's really the most bang for your buck if you're looking, if you're looking to start. One of the things I want to address here that's really important that people understand is if you're having inflammation, especially in your joints, or and this is kind of we have yeah we do have people with osteoarthritis as well as osteoporosis. Right. So yeah. And anytime you have a lot of inflammation in your joints. Um, and this is a lot of research and I have this on my website, um, nine times out of 10, you have a lot of inflammation in your gut. You're missing microbes and your gut has become what they call um, intestinal permeability, which makes it leaks, it's leaky gut syndrome. So what it does is it leaks these things into the bloodstream, which causes inflammation. And um, that leads to the joints being inflamed, other diseases happening because your, your gut is not, your gut is your protection from the outside world. And it's very thin and it's very small. So it's, it's a very thin, it's like the size of a human hair, maybe the half the size of that. And so if that gut lining um, becomes damaged, um, it, will, it will leak that stuff out into your bloodstream. And if you have an inflammation in your gut, it will go into your joints. It will go, you know, it can cause diabetes. It can cause all different types of um, autoimmune diseases because it's leaking. And to fix your gut is a, is a pretty easy thing to do. You just have to understand how it works and what protects it and what bacteria does that. I know a lot, I've learned a lot about that last year. And um, you, since your gut lining is, it's got a mucus layer on it. Um, there's one particular bacteria that they discovered in 2004 called Acromancia mucinophila. And it's really the only thing that it feeds off the mucus off your gut. It keeps your gut sealed. And what it loves is um, to eat certain foods that help to, it to stay strong and grow. And one of those is apple peels and apples. It loves the pectin and the things that are in apple peels. And if you eat a lot of that, you seal and heal the gut. It feeds it, makes it grow. Because a lot of people are missing this or have very low amounts of acromancia, which causes all kinds of gut problems. And when you feed it and take care of it, and it's as simple as eating apple peels or apples, um, it gives it this mucus stuff that it loves to eat and it seals the gut lining and it's very cool how it works. And um, I've seen a lot of success with it. Um, I've personally seen a, a big stuff with it within myself. Um, I feel so good because I think it's a very important bacteria that we need to understand that helps protect us and helps protect our gut lining. And I, after reading um, your recitation of the research and your blog on it, I was making my own applesauce, but then I decided I maybe that wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. um, and I bought the, the apple peel powder powder that you sell. So can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? And is it better to get from apples or is the powder an okay substitute? 
Well, from the beginning, I was peeling apples, but you know, after we peel a couple apples, two or three apples every day, you get sick of that. And I made so much applesauce because I was like, it also likes um, berries too. It also likes to be fed. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. So then I thought I'm just going to get this apple peel powder. I noticed a big difference when I started putting that in my smoothies. And um, it has been, it's been a really wonderful thing. I think apples are probably better, the peel themselves, okay. but yeah. um, I'm just like everybody else. I'm busy and I'm like, oh my God, I got to make more applesauce if I peel all these apples. Sometimes I peel apples and I'll eat the apples too, but I'll chop up the peel and put it in salads, just real tiny. It's just time consuming. So the apple peel powder is for people who are busy and don't yeah. have time, but you know, I think it's always best to get the food if you can, but right. if you can't and you're not busy. Um, I'm just like everybody else. Um, but it's not only, not only does acromancia help heal into the gut, it also promotes bifidobacteria in the gut, which is one of the most important bacteria we have. It's what we get when we're born and we get it from mother's milk or from, you know, being born through the birth canal or whatever. And it, there's a, it's called, um, it's from inside of the milk, there's something called oleo, um, human milk oleosaccharides. And they are, because your baby doesn't really have very many good bacteria when it's born is pretty sterile. You, they gets it from the mom. It gets it from everybody who touches it. And bifido is the young bacteria, the one that just, once you get a lot of that, it feeds all the other bacteria. It's the number one that one that the baby wants or we want. But as we get older, it diminishes because of antibiotics and our diets and things mm -hmm. like that. And so acromancy works with bifido together to strengthen that. And when I started to um, understand how that all worked, I felt 20 years younger when I started, I took the human milk, they're not actually from human milk, but I took those HMOs is what they call them. You guys, I was like, I like literally just was like, had twice the energy, three, four times the energy that I'd had before. I could tell it's called the young bacteria. It keeps you young. And, um, I really highly recommend that for people, especially if they're having joint problems too. It really does make a huge difference. The species mm -hmm. that are in your gut and a lot of people have it very diminished, especially as we get older. Right. You want to stay young and you want to keep inflammation down, you know, and I, I know all kinds of different bacteria. Um, these are two, this, these are two of my favorites. Um, but then there's kefir that just kind of took care of all of it for me. Um, but adding these actually made everything even better. Right. So it's, it's, it, here's the thing. Like I have a really good article that I wrote on my website about joints and I want to read you, if you, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to read you this story that I got. Right. Somebody sent this into me. I have a lives touch page and she sent in this article to me and she, she sent in something, a testimony. And she said, um, Dr. McCullough from the McCullough Health Center, an alternative proponent has a wonderful story about Sarah. Oh, she didn't send this to me. She sent this to him. Sorry. And um, I took it and put it on this so you could read it. She said, Sarah was 28 years old, was experiencing a lot of pain. She was well known, um, had gone to a very well known rheumatologist in Milwaukee. He told her to stop running or risk becoming permanently disabled. She was put on the drug, and I'm not sure how to say this, methotrexalin, which is an anti cancer drug. And methotrexate. the side Yes, methotrexate. Okay, trixate. Mm -hmm. Whatever. And yes. the side effects of that could be horrible. Her liver was checked every month. She was losing her hair. And a rheumatoid researcher told her to take the drug, but he expected it to shave 15 to 20 years off her life. So Sarah said, I was really afraid of what the drug was doing to my body. The physical therapist that I recommended, I get tested for her. I said, there's a lot we can do naturally. So I read a lot of books about rheumatoid arthritis and different alternative treatments. And I read the possibility being connected with an infection and low dose of antibiotics was prescribed. But then I came across your name in a book and I looked it up and then I went to Dr. McCall in Chicago. So she started on a new regimen and changed her diet quite dramatically with healthy fats, proteins, and a lot of fermented foods. And the results were spectacular. This is in Sarah's own words. I learned how to ferment my own vegetables, my own dairy. I made my kefir, kombucha, yogurt, cultured buttermilk, coconut kefir. And it took me two years to get it out of my system. But right away, I noticed a difference. In two weeks, my cravings for things like bread and wheat were diminished. And we did a live cell analyst before and after the diet. And my live cell analyst showed that I had leaky gut and digestive problems, proteins in my bloodstream, which is what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I came back three months later after being very strict. I felt so much better. I'd lost 10 pounds. I felt lighter. When they did the live ant cell analyst and showed me on the screen, my blood cells were perfect, wrong, round, strong, and healthy. And I had completely changed from before. And this took a year after following her strict regimen, she was able to resume her physical activities and she even won a triathlon, which is very cool. 
So, very cool. Yes, very cool. Yeah. Oh, did I lose you again? Hang on, there you are. No. So yeah. um, anyway, um, and there's a lot of different proteins that are in the foods we make that support our joints and ligaments. But the number one thing that I wanna address is the inflammation that's in our gut. And that just causes all kinds of problems with people. And uh, fixing the gut first is, that's where I would start, so. Yeah, and that is pretty much what I tell people is, um, I teach, as you know, weightlifting for building your bone strength, but if we need to start in the gut, and that's not my area of expertise, but I suggest people look at elimination diets or go to um, a functional medicine doctor. Yeah. And here's an interesting thing that Ernestine said, which just reminds me of my functional medicine doctor. She said, I'm allergic to raw apples. Would the powder possibly help me? Um, if you, are you, she's allergic to raw, she, I don't know if she'd be allergic to the powder, but I would think so since it's the same thing, but yeah, she, I don't know that. That's a tough one. That's yeah. a tough one. Cause you just never know. But here's the thing, a lot of food allergies, and this is something, my daughter had a lot of food allergies when I first started this. I gave her cultured food at every meal and almost all food allergies, what happens is, is you're missing certain particular bacteria. Uh, Clostridia is one of them, which is, has a hundred species in it, but Fido's another one. When you're missing those strains, you develop food allergies. And I have seen in my line of work, thousands of people get rid of food allergies by having cultured food at every meal, because um, it puts those strains back into the body mm -hmm. that are missing, that are causing the allergies, making you allergic to foods you can't eat. And they just did a big study in Stanford in July, and they were really surprised. They didn't expect to find this, but they put people on fermented foods, and then they put people on a lot of fiber foods, like fruits, vegetables, you know, nuts, seeds, grain, or whatever. They had, they had tons of fiber. Now, fiber feeds your bacteria, but what they found shocked them. They said the cultured foods changed people dramatically, and the people that were eating the fiber had a lot of undigested fiber in their in their stools because they didn't have the bacteria to digest the fiber because the, the bacteria digest the fiber and that makes the bacteria grow like crazy and strengthens your gut. So if you don't have those strains, you can't heal. And that's what fermented foods do. And they do it significantly better than supplements that usually get killed by the stomach acids. Right, so, mm -hmm. right. And I, I do have to say some of the recipes are super, super simple. I did, um, I've done two of your cultured vegetable recipes and just, you know, had a big container, bought one of your jars, big container in the fridge. And I might put it on top of a salad. I might put it next to some sliced chicken. So there are, if you just have some things like that in your fridge, it's really easy. So it's, it's the time commitment, but it's not that long. Um, well, you can make a gallon and it lasts nine months in your fridge and you only need right. a spoonful of the vegetables or right. the juice. You don't need tons of it. One spoonful right. does a lot. Uh, kefir, you know, even if you only have four to six ounces of kefir, it's a lot. There's 50 plus good bacteria in there. And kefir is the simplest of all the foods to make because you just put your, your milk in the jar with the culture and sit under counter for 24 hours and then you're done. That's yeah. pretty much all you do. So yep. it does the rest. And I've been working on um, the non-dairy kefirs. Yes. I've had some success and some not Which one did you try? Well, I, I did um, oats. Mm -hmm. that, worked, that worked really well. What I tried to do was I bought macadamia nuts, then made macadamia nut milk from the macadamia nuts. Yeah. And it might have just been part of my processing, but I, it, I didn't get it to culture. Maybe I didn't put um, the right sugar for it to eat. Right. I, it did not know, get sour. Yeah, it did not get sour. Sometimes, though, though, they don't get super sour, the non-dairy milks as much because they've got mostly water in them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're still working. They're just not the uh, second best to work the next best. I'm not sure right. why that is. Okay. But in certain nut keepers, the second batch is always more tangy than the first batch. Okay. So. All right. And I, we do have a question here. Someone's asking if you use lactose-free milk. Well, that has the milk sugar. So then you're going to have to add sugar if you're using lactose-free milk, right? Well, if you're allergic to lactose, the kefir is 99.9% .9 lactose-free because all of those milk sugars are eaten by the bacteria. 
So uh -huh. if, you take, if you take that out, then that has nothing to eat. So the grains will die or the kefir won't, it won't culture. So if you're worried about lactose, it's lactose free. Kefir is lactose free. So that's the awesome. beauty. Um, and it's, well, that was so much easier when I made it with milk. I'm going back to the milk. Yeah, if lactose is the problem, <laughs> then just do the kefir uh, with milk because it will eat all the lack. That's the, that's what gives it the sour taste because yeah. the sugars are gone. The milk sugars are right. Gone. So right. and they are very efficient at eating it all out. So um, the longer it sits, the less there is. So, but it's it's within 24 hours. Most of the almost all the lactose is completely gone. And so. do you recommend? I think I remember from your website, you recommend whole milk. Oh no, I, you can do any kind of milk. You any can, kind, okay. You can use any kind, from fat-free to, you know, raw milk to any any of those will work. Uh, whole, yeah, and they all work. Um, and, and so, mm -hmm. I'm whatever, thinking it'll be thicker if you use whole milk. Okay, but it's still really thick with two percent milk. It's really. Okay. And the best place to start, I think you can get kefir grains, which last your lifetime, but they're like a pet. You got to take care of them. You got to feed them or they, they can die on your right. life forever. Or you can do easy kefir, which is made from kefir grains. It's just a powder package and it's just freeze, flash freeze dried kefir grains. And you put that in the milk. And then once you make a jar, you can take a portion of that jar and make another jar and another jar and another right. jar. Right. That's what I do. It's so yeah. easy. I'm yeah. a, I, I, I'm not even good with plants, so I, I don't know that I would keep yeah. my keeper grains alive. Well, it's funny because I recommend this to certain people that have are busy or, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just want to, and I started with this. Um, I didn't start with this particular easy keeper. I tried a different product that was like it. Um, and th then we, I actually designed the easy keeper to be actually made from keeper grains. The other one was just the strains of bacteria. But right. it, it's the reason I started because it was easy. So yeah. It's a, it's a great place to start if you're if Yeah, you're I can attest to it. I mean, literally you add you add it, you know, the easy kefir, whatever your milk or nut milk is, counter mm -hmm. and fridge. Not nearly as complicated as when I was making kombucha. Yes. It's the easiest of all cultured vegetables and um and, and it will make you gallons and gallons. One package will make you gallons and gallons of kefir. So it's very affordable, it's very it's something that's it's really nice because it's all and it lasts for months in your fridge. Once you make kefir, yeah. kefir preserves the food and keeps it safe, but it preserves you too. So when you eat it, it preserves and, and keeps you young and help, you know, and it, it will like I've had kefir that's been in the fridge for six months and it was still fine because there's so much good bacteria that dominates and keeps that right. all pathogens. That's awesome. And and that's I think I, yeah. I think I know what you're going to say. Somebody said, Jane said, I'm lactose intolerance and had a problem with store-bought variety. And I suspect it's because there's other not so friendly things in store-bought varieties. Store-bought kefir or store-bought milk? Kefir. Yeah, store I think. Like some of the kefirs at the store, okay, they have some completely different strains than homemade kefir. They're adding stuff in there. Yeah, um, I was in there and I'm like, that doesn't belong to kefir and that doesn't belong to kefir. And I don't know what this is, but I right. have like 14 strains and, you're, and you well, should have 50, but they're taking certain strains like Saccharomyces boulardii, which is not in kefir, and they're putting it in there. And then they're putting right. other bacteria, which isn't bad, but it doesn't work as right. And what happens is bacteria likes their little world and whoever has the most, they dominate. So if you put in stronger strains that are, you know what I'm saying, that want to dominate, they take over and then you don't get as many of the benefits because I the see. other ones have taken over and you're not getting the natural occurring ones that are in kefir. So, right. although I think it's a good place to start if people who don't want to make it, I really highly recommend you make your own just because you'll get so many more benefits if you do. Right, so. right. And I, I started out making my own kombucha because of the high sugar content in the ones you can purchase. But after you about that, do you want me to tell you about that? Yes, okay. please. So, here's the deal. They have to put, okay, on kefir, you will see mm -hmm. 12 carbohydrates on kefir. That's not true. They can't account for the bacteria eating the lactose out of the kefir. I see. The, the, the government won't let them because it's so variable. Like it's, it's basically lactic acid now. So it mm -hmm. turns to a lactobacillus. And so basically when you see kefir that has 12 grams of sugar in your store, it really only has one. And okay. it's the same with kombucha. Kombucha does not have a lot of sugar because the bacteria 
and the good yeast eat the sugars out eat of it. That's sugar. why it tastes like vinegar. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So you're not necessarily yeah. getting all the sugars that you think you're getting. Okay. Kombucha. Now, let me tell you this one thing. A lot of the kombucha, because there's a lot of kombucha on the market, they're flash pasteurizing some of them so they won't leak on store shelves. The only um, one who's not doing that is GT Synergy Kombucha. And he is okay. such a purist. He would never do that. He just won't. And so I recommend that. I don't get anything for saying that. I just have, I just know right. him and I know he's, he's, and you know, he, yeah, he loves his kombucha. You're not messing with it. You're not flashback because you kill some of the good bacteria. Right. Right. So, Which, um, and that's so fascinating because GT has some of the higher sugar counts on their label, right. but I just need to ignore that. Well, yeah. I mean, there's probably what 30 calories, I think in half a thing, but I don't even think it's that. Because I, when I first started drinking it, I used to test my blood sugar and it would barely raise me. So it yeah. just depends on which juices he uses. And if you want, if you're worried about it, you can get the plain ones or the lemon right. ones. Right. Have that's them. what I do. It's like uh, lemon yeah. cayenne or something like that. And that's really only if I'm traveling and I need to grab something right. off a shelf. So um, it is really such well, good information to have. Well, and kombucha has, okay, if you don't know what kombucha is, it's a fermented tea, but it it has this thing in it called a scoby and it looks like this rubbery little i don't know like the top of a drum and it's a comp it's a you know poly matrix of different types of um good bacteria in yeast and it, it, it's very tough i mean it when you make it, it it's rubbery it's hard to tear apart but it's the same materials that our joints are made of so those you know it has chondroitin sulfate and it has glucosamine all these things that could really help your joints um, and it's, it's in kombucha and it's naturally occurring in there and it's bioavailable for the body. So it's so much better than a supplement because the body knows what to do with food. It just, right. it just works better to eat a food. And so that's another really big benefit to kombucha is that it does actually have some of the substrates that you need to have those joints strong in the actual makeup of the kombucha tea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. So we, and we, there is just a huge world um, of where you can go with this. At Thanksgiving, I made um, Donna's recipe for um, fermented cheese. So I did a little um, charcuterie board and I had the cheese um, that I, it was kefir cheese. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, I swear y'all, I'm not someone who spends hours and hours in the kitchen it wasn't that hard I was yeah. so surprised well and, and I have a couple of dip recipes that I had to make people stop eating it because they had never had cultured foods we went to we were at the lake one time we have a we had a boat down there and I brought this dip and it was kefir cheese and it was cultured vegetables and it is one of my more popular recipes when I go to my classes people go flip out over it because you don't think it would be good but it is and this guy would not stop. I bet he had two and a half cups. And I like, you are going to be in so much trouble tomorrow. That is a lot of good bacteria. And I said, you are going to be thinking about me when you're in the bathroom. And he started laughing and And he was like, because it will clean you out. It will clean you out that. You know what I'm saying? And it did. Right. He was like, I mean, it, I mean, nobody's supposed to eat two cups. But anyway, it was like, if you're not used to it, especially, but it is. I mean, I've done this other recipe where I take kefir cheese and kefir cheese is just, you just take kefir and you put it in a strainer with a coffee filter and you just let the whey drain out. And then you got kind of like a cream cheese, maybe a little thicker right. while you strain yeah. it. And I'll do this thing, especially around the Super Bowl where we, we cook onions, we'll cook onions and some olive oil or butter or whatever and they caramelize them. And then you mix them when they let them cool down. And you mix oh. them. It is the best onion dip on the planet. We oh, make yeah. gallons and I hide it in the back of my fridge because if I don't, I won't get any because everybody eats it so fast. I bet we made, made it three times in the last month it's just because it's so popular. Everybody loves it. Yeah. So, and those are easy, fun meals that you would, you know, easy, fun things you can have that give you lots of probiotics. Right. And for many of us who are not eating dairy, we can now venture back into the cheese world with our kefir cheese. And let me tell you something though, kefir is a very different food than dairy. Um, right. It has tons of vitamin C, which dairy does not because it, the fermentation process adds vitamin C, vitamin B, it has vitamin K, it has phosphorus, it has all these different minerals and nutrients in it 
that milk doesn't have prior to fermentation. And that's true with cultured vegetables. And that's just not me saying that, that's science. Right. So it takes out the lactose, it denentures the, the caseins a little bit. So it's like night and day compared to regular dairy. It takes out chemicals and pesticides because fermentation does that. Uh, it also does that in ordinary cultured vegetables. Um, you don't have to use organic vegetables to make cultured vegetables because by the time you're done fermenting them, they'll be, they degrade those compounds in there and remove them. And I have research that shows that it does that. So, you know, dairy has been very demonized, but keeper is really a different food. Right. It's not yet. And I'm so glad to really define that so right. that I can not struggle so much with all my nut keepers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're hard to do. So, they are hard. Yeah. They are hard. So for the group, you guys all just got to win and you don't have to spend months trying to figure out nut keepers. Right. Unless of course you love nut keeper and you're good at it. Go right ahead. Keep and I have like it. 16 different versions of non-dairy keeper. You do because I scrolled through the whole thing and I've tried a few of them. I had a, a friend who had a little boy who was allergic to everything. He was like two. He wasn't talking. And this was the very, very beginning. And um, I told her to make coconut keeper and he just thrived on that. And within a year, he was able to eat all the foods that he was allergic to. He was speaking and he was three. I think he was three years old and he was reading and he hadn't even spoken a complete sentence yet. And his brain was just locked down. He wasn't getting any nutrients. Mm -hmm. And he kind of looks like one of those kids with the, with the extended bellies from third world countries that are having malnutrition. He looks like that. And once he started getting the nutrients he needed, he could, it was like he was set free and he was making up for lost time. And that was the beginning of, for me, understanding that there was something to these foods that I didn't understand. Right. Fast forward many years later, that's just happened over and over and over again. He couldn't digest the foods, so he wasn't getting nutrients from the foods. And it was, it was right. a very powerful lesson for me. And it made me do more research and understand what was happening. Yeah. And a powerful lesson for me was discovering that I was not, I wasn't doing anything with all the vitamin B that I was getting into yeah. my body. I now know that's a fairly common problem. Very, yes. If you don't have the right um, bacteria, you can't absorb that. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of the biggest things. B vitamins have to have certain strains of bacteria in order for you to get the benefits from it. If you don't have those, right. you're, get, you're just wasting your money. So that, right. and I've seen that a lot. So, and that's true with a lot of things. Um, you need, gut bacteria does so much. Our bacteria does so much that we don't understand. Like you can't even breathe without it. And I didn't even know that. Um, but for instance, like if you, if there's a virus going around, which we've had going around and your body has these T cells in them, and they see this virus, they will alert the body that there's something, there's a foreign invader and then they will go attack it. But if you, and the way you get more T cells to do that is to have more good bacteria in your gut. It will make you quadruple the amount. If you don't have the good bacteria, then you don't have those helpers that fight those things um, that fight cold, flus, influenza, whatever. And so then you're kind of left um, struggling and being a human host for something that you don't want to be a human host for. And then cool thing about it is once you start to understand how these things work and you see the evidence in your life, because a lot of people don't believe me until they see the evidence and mm -hmm. then they believe me, then you're free. Then you know how to care for your body in a way that you did yeah. before, which is like, it's like the chains fall off and you are like, oh, my body is designed to take care of me. We don't talk yeah. about wellness. Wellness is not the norm, which is breaking my heart. It's it's the exception. Do you know most people are have got all kinds of problems, and um, that's one of my things. I didn't know how bad I felt till I found out how good I felt. Right. I want people to know that. I want people to know that they can have so such a sense of well being and joy in their lives that they want to start a website and then they want to write books when previously they didn't. So it's not right. my fault that that happens to you, but it was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you don't feel well, you don't want to do those things. And right. I don't want people to go through their life and not feel the way that I feel now because I felt that other way. That was horrible, but I didn't know it was so bad till I felt so good. Right. And so that, that change, and then you're a lighthouse for other people. They, right. they want to know what you have. You can't help it. I wasn't going to tell anybody about this because they thought I was weird. They were like fermenting foods on your counter. That's weird. That isn't very good. 
And I couldn't stop it when I'd see my friend's kids sick or, you know, mm -hmm. I remember one day I took my daughter class and one of my friend's little boy was just coughing. I thought he was gonna lose his lung under the table and he had terrible asthma. And I decided she was the first one I told about Kiefer. And within a month, he was off his inhaler. And here's wow. a neat story. Seven months later, his mom had stopped giving him Kiefer and he was in the kitchen one day, he was seven years old. And he had his hand on the refrigerator door and he was big crocodile tears running down his face. And he goes, mom, you haven't been making me Kiefer and I can feel my asthma, it's coming back and I don't want it back. He was bawling his eyes uh -huh. out because he knew that that had made him well. And from that day to this, she always gives it Kiefer because it does, it works on reducing the inflammation. And yeah. um, that happened so, to me. Yeah, and so you bring up a good point. Um, and it's a question actually that I've been asked by other people is, well, if you just get that good bacteria in your gut, why do you have to keep doing it all the time, every day? Some, and, of, them, some of them are transient bacteria. For instance, the one in mm -hmm. cultured vegetables, lactobacillus plantarum is a transient. So it only lasts three to four days in the body. And what mm -hmm. it does is it's this, it, it acts like a pathogen in the body. So it steals the food from the pathogens and then it, the pathogens bind to that bacteria and it flushes it out of the body. Um, Kiefer has ones that will last indefinitely, but not all of them. Some of them are transient too. Um, and it depends on how much fiber you eat or how much prebiotics, which are fiber for food for you that make those things grow and multiply. The stronger they get, um, you know, the, the more good bacteria you have. And you don't know necessarily, I've gone like a month without it, Kiefer, a couple of times. I just don't feel as well. I don't feel bad, but I don't feel as well. Right. And, and I notice a difference in, there's like a, I don't know, kind of like a, almost a little bit of an achiness that I have that I don't have ever. And I, I notice it's, as soon as I put the key for back, it goes away. So. Right. So you anyway. go on an extended holiday. It's okay. Oh yeah. I don't do that. stress out. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't have to have it every, I don't have it every single day, but almost most days, but like if I'm on vacation, sometimes I've taken it with me, but sometimes I don't have it, but I'm fine. I feel great. Yeah. So it's not like something bad's gonna happen in a few days. Now in the beginning, it did, I did notice that when I didn't have it, my blood pressure would go up. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't when I quit having it. Right. Now it's all normalized and you know, other lifestyle changes help that too. Right. Like, but in the beginning, I had to have it, like the first few years, I had to have it all the time. And about how much do you think you consume now a day? I have a, usually a cup a day of kefir. Okay. I usually, I usually have, a, I have a smoothie every morning mm -hmm. and I make all different kinds and I do that or a smoothie bowl. I do that like every single day. So I just, yeah. I like it though. I enjoy it and it's fast and easy. Right. So yeah. it's something I enjoy having and, and I always make a double batch and give some to my daughter. Yeah. So she's always excited to see which one I've made today. So. I always do That's that. Fine. My, husband, so, my husband drinks it straight from the jar, which I don't do. I always make a smoothie, but he just drinks it straight because he's in a hurry. So that's what he does. And do you throw the HMO powder in with your smoothie? Yes. And I don't do that all the time. You only need to do that for a few weeks. Okay. And then you take a break and then, you know, put it in every, you know, every couple of months. I don't do it all the time. I don't think you should have to do that all the time. I think once you get that established, that's pretty good because your smooth your smoothie your keeper smoothie is going to feed that okay that strain so that's going to really help you so that's not something you have to do forever just for you know a few weeks and you get that established and growing and then just eat lots of berries and uh, lots of kefir and it, it'll feed that and make it grow that's great along with some apple peel <laughs> yes <laughs> i do do that too sometimes so yeah and so just to be clear i think we've talked about it but we'll just say it again so Prebiotics are the fibers and apple peel would be one of them that feed the probiotics. Well, you and, don't get any benefits from fiber because you can't digest them. Right. They're empty food for you. The main reason you eat fiber is for your bacteria, which right. you need. That's why there's so many studies on how good fiber is for you because it makes your good bacteria grow. But if you don't have the strains in there, then you don't really get the benefits because you can't do anything with fiber. Your body... It doesn't use right. any of the nutrients from it, so. Right. So we want to have it, but we want to make sure that we've got the probiotic good bacteria 
strains it. Yes. So that's that's one of the most important things too. I mean, there there are it's real. That's why a lot of people do really well, like on juice cleanses and things, because the fiber that's in juices is soluble fiber, and that feeds bacteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, fruits and vegetables have it, grains, seeds, nuts. A lot of people can't handle certain ones because they're they just don't have the ability to break it down. They don't usually don't have the gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, but the other, the, one of the most important ones that the bacteria in your gut loves probably the most is resistant starch. And if you don't know what resistant starch, resistant starch is in things like potatoes, rice, um, oatmeal, things like that. But it has to be cooked and then cooled because when it's cooked, it just turns into sugar mold, you know, it just turns into sugar in the, and it feeds you. It, it gives you, mm -hmm. and like, but when you cook a potato and then you cool it and then you eat it like a potato salad or something, or even just cool it for 10 minutes before you eat it. What that does is that break, those starches change back into resistant starch, which do what they say. They resist digestion and your gut bacteria loves resistant starch. I mean, loves it. And my kefir grains, I give them potato starch to make them grow and they go bananas. Every one of my <laughs> cultures goes bananas when I give it potato starch because they love it. And resistant starch is in green bananas, like semi-green bananas, uh, rice that's been cooled, uh, potatoes. I, if I eat a baked potato, I let it cool for 10 minutes and then I eat it because I'm going to get more resistant starch. Oatmeal has it. Um, I do a kefir breakfast pudding with that. But that is another fantastic way to feed your gut microbiome is resistant starch. And just go look it up, man. It's I have a whole, I have articles on it and I have you recipes. Do. Yes, I do. Um, but I don't want to diminish how powerful it is. It's very powerful. Right. And if you eat too much, now you can buy potato starch in a bag now, which is make sure kefir smoothies super smooth and creamy. And it's really good, but just, just do a little spoonful because you're, you'll hear the gurgling. Because what happens is when you put resistant starch in your body like that, it's so dominant, it wants to kill everything that's bad. So you'll hear gurgling and it'll be, it'll go after those pathogens because it's like, we've got the numbers now, you guys need to get out of here. <laughs> and it, it goes to town on that. But potato starch, I even have some recipes and muffins and things I make with it. Um, and I give potato starch to my keep friends because they love it so much. So it's really, well, it's really a powerful tool to help feed your microbiome, so. Awesome. Well, I feel like we just had a masterclass on what you need to know and why you might want to consider this as um, the next important thing to tackle. And I promise you, if you do something super simple, like just buy the freeze-dried grains, kefir grains, it's on your counter. It's, it's not the overwhelming thing that... I looked, the very first time I looked at Donna's recipes, I was almost overwhelmed. They all looked so good and there's so many things you want to make, but it's a little overwhelming. So start with kefir and maybe a, a little eight. I have a button on the top of my page. Everything I teach is free. So, and there's a little smiley pot. It says start here and it has a drop down, and it tells you how to make these foods and it's all free for everybody. And it's super simple. It's, it's just, I have videos, I have all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's easy to make, it's fun to make. And um, I promise you, I don't do things hard. I don't have time. So most everything I do, I eat, I eat, them. I, I make these recipes because I need them for me because I'm, you know, I like diversity too. So mm -hmm. everything is super simple. And, but honestly, you know, you should start with the thing that most interests you. Like if kombucha is calling you, check that out. Right. Altered vegetables, whatever your body kind of knows. Like I've noticed this with people, they kind of are attracted to one of these cultured foods. And I always tell them to start with whatever it is they're kind of interested in because it's probably what they need. And so each one of them does different things. So, you know, and, and doing them all at once could be overwhelming. I didn't do that. So, um, you know, just start with one thing. And honestly, I swear, kefir takes less than five minutes to make. And then it lasts right. it for does. months. So yeah. um, it's, a, it's yeah. a wonderful way to get started. So. And Chris put in the chat the link to your website. Um, so that's really good. Did he Everybody's put in the article? Got... I want to give you this article. Too. I think he did put in, wait, there was yeah. one article he put in. About your joint? Chris, Chris you might have to. Is he on here? 
I'm not certain. Uh, yeah, I put in the article, uh, can your gut heal your joints at the, at the beginning. I'll, I'll paste it again. So it can be okay, that'd be great. That'd be great. There you go. That's awesome. So that one helps. Uh, that one has got a lot of information in it about, you know, it's got a lot of studies in it that would really help you. I think would make a really difference. And the, and the thing about it is, is that, you know, you know, one of the things I've learned from doing this for so long was there were a lot of people that gave me a hard time about this and a lot of friends who just thought I was, had lost my mind. But every <laughs> single one of those friends eventually caved. And when they were ready, they tried it. And then they became my biggest supporters. So if you're not ready, that's okay too. Um, but it'll just bug you. It's just going to bug you. It's just going <laughs> to kind of run around. You're going to see Kiefer Kabucha everywhere now. And it's just one of those things that eventually you'll just, resistance is futile. You'll just have to give it. So that's what happens to most of, almost everybody I know when I was first doing this. But what a joy to see people get better, to learn how to heal yeah. their bodies. And food is powerful medicine. And we don't hear enough. Doctors get two weeks of medicine in medical school. They don't understand. Um, they don't spend a lot of time on nutrition. And it's what the cells of our body are made of. Right. And now there's so much research about the microbiome, which is so exciting to me because for a long time, I was just out there all alone in the wilderness saying, this is right. really good for you, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, and doctors and doctors were saying leaky gut wasn't even a thing. And now it is. like it's it <laughs> really is. It's got its yeah. own code for healthcare. Well, my daughter had leaky gut when I first started. That yeah. was one of the reasons I found some of these foods and they wanted to take out her gallbladder because they didn't know what else to do. And I'm like, that's surgery. I could do better <laughs> than that. And I just started giving her a cultured food at every meal and she healed. And I didn't think it would do that, but it did. And uh, in this day and age, I just, I think there's going to be a, you know, a paradigm shift in medicine in that, you know, functional medicine doctors are doing it. More and more people are waking up to the idea that there's nothing out there that's going to save you. You're going to save you. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to control what you put in your mouth. And there's a quote from Hippocrates that I loved. And he said, when someone wants to be well, you need to ask them if they want to give up the thing that's been making them sick. And uh, that is really true because yeah. wellness is addictive and wellness, I'll never go back to that other life I had. That was no fun whatsoever. And I used to lay on the couch and cry because I'd watch other people living their dreams and I wasn't doing anything, but just surviving. And none of us are meant to live that way. And we all right. have special gifts that we give to each other. You have special gifts in your group and the things you're doing. And we all need each other, you know? And we do. I never thought I would love bacteria, but I do because it made me well. <laughs> so if any one of your people here listening, um, you know, just it just takes a little bit. It just takes one smoothie. Right. That's all I right. did at the beginning because I was too sick to do anything else. And that one smoothie made all the difference. Yeah. It's, and it's, I, I know that it's helping me. I am clearing my system of mold. It took me a long time to figure that out, but healing my gut's a very important part of that. Yeah. Oh, very much. Cause it detoxifies you. These foods yeah. are very powerful detoxifiers. I have a whole thing on that too. And we need that because we get right. exposed to a lot more than we used to be. So, right. Anyway. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Very good point. We, even if you feel good, you don't know how good you could feel. I think that's one of the most important things Donna said is. I want you guys to feel that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I thought I felt, I thought 15 yeah. years ago, I thought I felt okay. Now I know it's just <laughs> I could like, have felt a lot better. I mean, everything got better. The sky was bluer. Right. The grass was greener. I, I remember when I first started doing this stuff, but I'd go to the grocery store and they would, they would sack my groceries for me and put them in the bag. And I want to hug them. And I'm like, what is the matter with me? Do you know what I'm saying? Because I would be, somebody would hold the door for me and I would feel this gratefulness in my heart. And people had done that before for years, but there was a sense of compassion and, and connectedness to people because I felt so good. It made me love other people. You know, yeah. it made me, it made me appreciate everybody. You know, I appreciated the things they were doing for me. And it, it just, it made such a big difference in the joy that I just didn't think I understood what joy was till I felt good. Joy is, oh. you can't stop it. It just flows out of you. 
And through that, I started a website and wrote three books. And you guys, I'm telling you, I skipped English in high school. It was bad. And I didn't know how to write. You know what I'm saying? And I, my sister right. was smart, so she did my homework. But, you know, something inside of me, people kept saying, can you write a book? Can you help us? And I couldn't, after a while, I couldn't tell them no anymore. Right. I wouldn't even feel what I felt. And uh, what if I had done that? That was just a hidden treasure down inside of me. But they're in all of us. They, there's... There's wellness in all of us, but there's joy in all of us. And there's gifts that all of us have that we need to give yeah. to one another. But you can't do that if you don't feel good. When you feel good, you do good. And that's, that's how it works. a great quote from you. When you feel good, you do good. Yeah. So, so we're all going to get out there and feel good. Yes. We need it, man. It's crazy out there right now. I know. <laughs> this whole world. People are struggling, you know. People are struggling. And they really we can are. All, but it'll we can be all okay. contribute. Yeah. This contrast helps us. It helps us want to be well. Do you know? It really does. And in that contrast, because what if I hadn't gotten sick? What if I right. hadn't had diabetes and high blood pressure and had an eight-week preemie baby? What if I hadn't had all those bad things happen to me? I would not be here, nor would I know the wellness that I know today. Right. And, and you wouldn't pain. be helping all of us. And when pain turns, when pain is healed, it turns to wisdom. And wisdom is what helps other people. And so that's the joy of. I wouldn't change anything in my life. I'm so thankful for the pain that brought me here because it changed everything. Yeah. And we all need that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was a joy. So you bet. it was, it was great. I know everybody is thrilled. I saw a lot of nodding heads and a lot of smiles and um, I will send out an email um, just giving everybody this link again and links um, to Donna's page and the article. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks oh, for coming on. Yep. Everybody have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.